I've got a cold! Yay! So I'm back again with another book review. I'm still doing this thing where I'm not allowing myself to start reading a new book until I've made a review of the last one I've read, so I haven't read in a while. But I'm going back home again tomorrow, so I figured I might want something to read on the train. And I, you know, really need to get going because I have a lot of books to read and they're just going to keep piling up. It's my birthday soon, so I might even get more books and I have read, like, very few of the ones I got for Christmas and those weren't that many. You might remember this one if you saw my Christmas book haul. This is Snow Like Ashes by Sarah Raj or Raj or Raj. I'm so sorry. I have no idea how this name is supposed to be pronounced. I was really intrigued by this... oh, that's completely out of focus. I was really interested in this image on the cover and I sort of saw this as a portal or something like because I knew there were different lands which were like winter and spring so that's kind of what I thought this was, there was this kind of portal that went between the worlds. I was wrong about that. Snow Like Ashes is a fantasy story. It takes place in this world which has a total of eight countries and everything is kind of smoothly divided we have four countries that belongs to the rhythms and four that belongs to the seasons. Now the rhythms are kind of like our world with seasons that change like ours do, whilst the seasons are winter, spring, summer and autumn and they each have one of the seasons always. There is a lovely map of Primoria, which is the land this these countries are located in, or kingdoms are located in. Like I said, everything is kind of smoothly divided. Each one of these kingdoms has a magical conduit. So there is a kind of magic in this world that not everyone can use. Only a member of the royal family can use its kingdom's conduit to channel magic into its own nation's people. So this sounds really complicated. Like, for example, the King of Summer has his conduit, I can't remember what it is, uh, it's an item, it's one, I one country has a, a crown, one country has an axe, I love that those two are with the opposite gender than you expect. And the king or queen can use this to channel power into their people for whatever they need. They can also channel into their land, I think. They will never risk having bad years of harvest because their king or queen can provide them with that. But there is, of course, another catch to this whole thing. Not only is it only the eldest of the royal family who can use it, but four of the conduits are female and four of the conduits are male. This story is about a girl named Mira. She's from Winter. Winter has a female line conduit. That means that no matter how many men, there could be 200 men existing from the royal family of Winter, and not a single one of them could do a single thing with this conduit. Like, it would be useless. It needs to be a woman, the eldest woman. This is also very evenly divided. You might have noted there are eight kingdoms, four of each, four women, four men. And also, two of the women are from rhythms, two of the women are from seasons, two of the men are from rhythms, two of the men are from seasons. Everything is quite evenly divided up like that. But now we're coming to the part where it all gets a bit crazy. The King of Spring is evil. It's been 15, 16 years since spring invaded and basically eradicated winter by killing winter's queen and taking and breaking the conduit. Majority of the people of winter were taken into prison camps and worked as slaves all through throughout different places in spring for some reason that is kind of explained or more like theorized about in this book. Uh, spring never actually does anything with winter as the land, it just kind of lets it be there. Now there are I think 27 people that make it out at first when when winter fall. And among them we have this old general who throughout the book is, is called Sir and his wife who used to be like a lady in the court of the queen and a bunch of other relatively random men and women. Along them two children the crown prince and Mira. Now like I said, winter is female lined and so the only living person we have of the winter of the winter royal line here is the crown prince and he's kind of useless. He's about 16 years old when the story starts and they don't have the conduit. Like I mentioned, being broken and separated. In the beginning of the story they have found out where one of the pieces are kept. 
it gets moved around a lot and they finally find out that this is where it's going to be, probably. Amira's been trained her entire life to fight in battle, but she's just an orphan that just happened to be picked up as they were leaving the capital, as they were fleeing this falling nation. And she's kind of looked down upon and she's not really trusted and she's fighting really hard to try and prove herself and she gets to go on this mission to try and find the conduit and this is where everything sparks, the story gets rolling. And that is about as far as I'm going to give you for the non-spoilery part. Just like with the last book I read, I did have a little bit of a hard time with this book. I think I wasn't as intrigued by this book from the beginning as I was with the last one though. So I think I had a little bit more skepticism going into this book. But once again, my skepticism to this book made me actually have to think deeper about it because I did not not enjoy it. But I was very skeptical and very questioning and I did look into it and I did find very specifically what I liked about it by doing that. And I will go into that but that will be very spoilery so if you have not read this book and you are interested then you should probably leave now and then come back once you've read it because I'd love to talk about it. Okay, spoilers. I'm gonna try and make this not too long. I say that, and I'm probably gonna fail, but here we go. I got a bit frustrated with the fact that Mira was in love with Mather, because it's so obvious. And then later on as I thought about it more, it annoyed me even more because he's like the only boy she's ever known. He's like the only person her own age she's ever known. That didn't sit really well with me, but I did at the same time kind of like it, because it does make sense. This is the only person she's ever had her own age. He's one of the few people who seem to truly trust her and treat her as an equal. And so it's natural that she'd fall in love with him. But I love that it's not so much focused on that. Her thoughts often come to him and she often thinks about him and she like, wants to impress him. But she is far more focused on Winter, on wanting to get her land back, her kingdom back even before she knows that she's the princess. When she meets Theron, she's not overly thrilled, of course, about the whole arranged marriage thing, but she does grow to like him. But from the first moment when they meet, when she reads the poem that he's written, they do connect. They do show that they see things the same way and they think about the same things and they do have a natural connection that I think you could build on. Not like worry, like she can't make up her mind at least not as I see it. As I see it, she is worried to lose Mather because he's her oldest friend and she cares deeply for him. But she also has clear feelings for Theron. I like that. I like that she seems to fall out of love with him. Learning all about the magic and this whole thing with Angara, I like that. The fact that it built up this evil when everybody got to use the magic. It showed a sort of responsibility for when they chose to make the conduits, that it wasn't just the rulers that were like, we want all the power for ourselves. They were like, no, this has gone way out of hand and everything is becoming crazy and the land is all dying. We can't let this go on. We need to do something about this and control this. My personal theory is also that all the land that completely died during this time was the plains that takes up such a big part of the country. Um, if you look at the map. All in all, I did like this book. I'll probably read the next one when that comes out. Maybe it has and I'm not keeping up with it. Um, but I'm not like eagerly, eagerly waiting for it. Like, it'll be nice to see how more she develops this world, but I'd also probably be kind of fine not reading the next book at all. We'll see how I do with time management and book reading. I am now gonna go on and try to pick which book to read next and going home for Easter and trying to not be sick anymore. Wish me luck with that.